What's the best meal you ever had that you will probably never get to have again? I worked on an archaeological dig in rural Italy when I was in college. One night, I was pitch black drunk hobbling back to our camp from the small town's only club when it began to rain. I tripped and broke my glasses right in front of a concerned elderly Italian woman's driveway. She yelled from her door to invite me in, clean me up, and serve me fried rabbit with tomatoes, spaghetti carbonara, and a cappuccino. Her husband had been a chef and restaurateur for years before his death, and she had helped around the kitchen. When he died, so did their business and her cooking for me was the first time she'd prepared a meal for another person in two years. Judging from her anecdote about feeding American GIs during World War II, she had to be at least 90, and this was in 2018. That meal simply will never materialize again. In any way, I went on a fishing trip with my brother and a couple friends down to Marathon in the Florida Keys. We took our boat stayed in a tent in this campground, and there was a restaurant there with a Cajun chef named Frenchie. One day we had a pretty good haul, Spanish mackerel, yellow hotel snapper, and quite a few fish we didn't really know what to do with. Frenchie saw our catch and offered a deal, give him the fish we didn't want, and he'd take the rest and cook it up Cajun style with sides and everything, dot for free. Okay, drinks weren't free, but oh my god. A couple hours later the four of us were treated to a feast of epic proportions. Imagine one of those all-you-can-eat fish dinners but with fresh fish you caught that day. Cooked expertly by a real Cajun acting as your own personal chef for the evening. Our family used to own a Chinese restaurant. My uncle woke up at 4 a.m. to make the noodles and to make Chinese roast pork. After he died, my relatives went with just getting noodles delivered from a factory. Our pork also didn't taste the same. I miss the food at that restaurant. Any food my dad made, especially his curry. I had lunch with Queen Elizabeth in 2005 and they cooked something that was sort of like rice but... Not rice. It was amazing. I have no fucking clue what it was and I've never seen it before or since. If it looks like rice but isn't, could be that tiny pasta thing. It's popular in Europe, Italy and Turkey to name a few, and comes in different tastes and forms but may be worth looking from there. One of the names for it is orzo. That looks familiar, maybe that's what it was. They made a big deal about all the food being Canadian, though. That being said, the most Canadian thing in the world is cultural appropriation so chances stand scallops. They were incredibly fucking delicious. Sautéed with garlic and butter. Perfectly cooked. Melt in your mouth. Unfortunately, that's how I found out I was allergic to shellfish. So I won't ever be having them again. Unless I'm ready to die. I was a broke student in Boston. I had like four dollars to my name. I was fucking starving so I just walked into a restaurant in Chinatown and just told the waiter that I had four dollars and just wanted some lunch. He laughed at me, sat me down, and brought out the most delicious, but simple food. It was chicken, with some green vegetable I couldn't identify, but it was dark and pungent, and a huge bowl of rice. I was almost in tears it was so good. The best food is had when you're starving. I remember after 48 hours of not eating, due to surgery, the cream of chicken soup they served me was the food of gods. At this fair someone was selling one dollar cheeseburgers and they were so much better than any other burger I had in my life. They probably knew how to cook a burger. I'm guessing they were properly searing the meat and toasting the bun. A good burger doesn't need a ton of extras to make it good. A Puerto Rican dish called mofongo, it's essentially mashed potatoes made out of bananas. Mofongo is made from plantains, and if you decide to make them again, add garlic, serve it with some cubed fried pork in a pork broth made from a bouillon cube. Dip them both in it and enjoy yourself a nice Puerto Rican meal. Super easy to make mofongo, cheap too, and great for quarantine, pretty sure that it is plantains, rather than Cavendish bananas, they're of the same family.
but plantains have more starch. Similar to potatoes, those smiley face french fries from second grade, they sure hit different. They sell them in the frozen food aisle. Black Ant Egg Rolls in Taiwan Surprisingly, one of the best meals I've ever had. But who knows if I will ever return to Taiwan. Even if I do, I could never find that restaurant again. My aunt's wedding reception in Boulder, Colorado was at some five-star restaurant tucked away in the mountains. It was by far the best food I have ever eaten. We can figure this one out. What kind of food? Catered or restaurant? When? For me it's because the people who made them are no longer alive. But my grandparents' food simple Mexican food that no matter how hard I try to recreate will never have the same taste or smell. And every bite filled you with an internal warmth that just made you feel like you were some important being idk how to explain it even breakfast tacos i remember waking up two hours before school to go sell them in his homemade salsa every day simple times the cake my sister got for my 11th birthday it was heavenly i tried buying the same cake from the same store multiple times but it never tasted as good as it did the first time. It was probably a new employee or a really senior one that didn't follow the recipe. I was a pizza maker for a few years at a small restaurant. After two years or so, I was pretty much running the pizza side by myself. I never told the boss, but I added additional spices to our pizza sauce and I even went as far as smoking it. I also smoked our sausage, pepperoni, and bacon. In addition to that, I mixed garlic salt into our dough and I needed it less than what was required. I've had strangers come up to me and ask me when I was returning to pizza making. When I left, regulars started complaining that their pizzas didn't taste the same. I would have told my boss what I did, but he never wanted to put effort into anything. There's an area in Rhode Island that has a bunch of old Italian restaurants that have been there forever something hill i think i was there for work once and ate at one of them for dinner it was legit the best meal i've ever had just the appetizer soup was probably better than any other restaurant food i've had you could tell it was awesome family recipes that they've been making for generations i'll probably never be in that state again federal hill yeah that's it thanks i had never heard of hot wieners and coffee milk either both were pretty good as well. Glenn Leavitt Scotch I have liver problems so I was told I should quit drinking. Been almost six months. Having scotch for dinner might have been contributing to the problem I DK. Like just scotch. I would eat lunch. Ah, that doesn't make it much better TBH. Hope your liver sorts itself out. 3. All equal The first was the antique garage in Soho. NY. It was some sort of Mediterranean stack made from hummus, tomato, lamb and some other things. Incredible. Then we in Eleuthera. Francis Placarus made the best fish and stone crabs ever. The most simple dish. The following day we hopped his shitty sailboat with no mast and an 11 horsepower trolling motor. We were out in big waves and were hand lining fish. We turned the boat back for the dock and along the way. He went below deck and fired some weed. That motherfucker came up so baked his eyes were pointing two different directions. And that is the God's honest truth. He then made the best white fish we have ever had for lunch. And he was baked as fuck all. A McDonald's burger at 3A, Monsieur in southwestern Wisconsin. I was a cook for five years. So my palate is pretty varied. But I can say that this is the best burger I have ever tasted. I can't remember where I was headed, but I decided to go to the drive through where I was greeted by an almost high school aged kid. Little did I know he would be the key to Flavor Town. When I bit into the burger, my mouth was greeted by perfectly seasoned beef in a toasted bun. The meat was seared to perfection while remaining tender. The bun I could only describe as toasted while simultaneously dipped in au jus. I was stunned at how amazing it was. The second was a pan-fried, breadless pork tenderloin sandwich served in a super small town in Iowa. 
It was salted just right and had a little tiny bit of spice to it. It was seared on a cast iron skillet to perfection. The tenderloin head was juicy and tender. The bun, condiments, and the plate itself were dwarfed by the tenderloin. I'm going to try to recreate it tomorrow. But I know it's hard to recreate the taste of a different cast iron skillet. Kita Flavor Town caught me off guard. I laughed. Any kind of food after having an operation. Because you've been fasting so long. That tea and butter toast really hits different. Almost makes you cry in gratitude. It's never time to not fast. I was in Istanbul on my own in 2015 and had gotten asked on a date by this vaguely hipstery Turkish guy around my age that sold me about $60 worth of Turkish towels. I was there for the second week of Ramadan and decided to say fuck it and agree to go with Hi Masir now. In and around the Blue Mosque and Hagia Sophia there are tons of people that have picnic and break. They're fast there. Just tons of kids playing. Young couples out and about. Old Turkish women and men sitting around in groups gossiping. This guy decided this was our best bet. He later told me he felt secure doing it this way. Since he didn't want me freaking out by a random Turkish guy hauling me off into a random part of the city. He then proceeds to bust out plastic containers of Turkish food. All stuff his mom made. Literally some of the best food I've ever had in my life. So I broke this guy's fast with him with the best Turkish food I'll ever eat have in my life. And then we went and got tea service. Stumbled randomly into a speakeasy downtown one evening and the bartender made me a drink with scotch in it that tasted like campfires and rain and wind and fresh moss and stormy skies. It changed me. I live in a poor rural state. It's pretty much a food desert. If Walmart doesn't sell it, you can't get it. Even our local Kroger's is a stripped-down version compared to other states. It's an hour drive to either. I have to grow a lot of food to get anything half-decent or order it online. I won't say never again but it's a semi-annual kind of deal. A sandwich with homemade buttermilk ranch. Heavy on the deal. Garden fresh tomatoes. Not picked early like those hothouse piles of garbage in the store. Fresh homemade pickles. A slice of Colby cheese and spinach lettuce mix also from the garden. It's pure heaven. I could eat it every day. I wash it down with some homemade apple cider beer. Tilda Tilda wedding cake Tilda Tilda. My wedding cake. I believe I never to get to have it again. Just order a smaller version from the same place for an anniversary. Super romantical and also a great excuse for you both to get that cake again. This is either really sad or really great. Will you not be going to other people's wedding? I don't understand this one. It was my own wedding smiley face. Yes, but you'll get cake in the future at other weddings right? Or do you mean specifically your own wedding cake? Since you said a wedding cake. Sorry for my grammar mistake. I meant my own wedding cake of course. Skirt steak. Sweet potato fries large amber beer from a restaurant that is closed. I actually got it have it twice? Because I went back later that week. My friend didn't want to since we were only there for a week. But I don't regret it. My dad's amazing sandwich. Way back when I was little. He made this bomb ass sandwich with ingredients you've never thought of combining. Like egg, sweet soya sauce, ketchup, bacon corned beef, etc. I forgot the exact combination but it's so delicious. However, my mom got mad at him for making unhealthy shit meals for the kids. So he got dejected and never made it again. He's still here, but to this day whenever I bring it up, he says he doesn't remember and says I'm hallucinating. I'm not. It's so good that I kept remembering to this day. I wish my dad could remember the recipe. I live in Washington State. I got a chance to go to Maine. Fresh lobster roll right out of the water. Almost. First time having lobster too. Anything my grandma cooked. About 20 years ago I had lapin o cider. Rabbit braised in cider. At a hole in the wall neighborhood restaurant in Paris with a girlfriend and a great group of friends. 
It was a tasty meal. But mostly I'll never be 22. Carefree. And in the throws off new romance again. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.